wonder. All right, let's find the increasing, <laughs> decreasing, <laughs> concave up, concave down, local extreme values and inflection points for the graph of y equals 2x to the 4 the minus 4x like squared plus 1. We're going to do this Windows all paint. analytically, meaning oh, using just straight um, calculus. So first I'm going to take the derivative. This is just the power rule, so it's 8x cubed minus 8x. And this is going to help us find out when it's increasing and decreasing. So let's first of all set that equal to 0. And when I do that, I get, I'm going to factor out an 8x, and I'll have x squared minus 1, which is nice because that factors into x plus 1 and x minus 1. So very quickly, if you're good at factoring, you can see right away that my zeros are going to be 0, 1, and negative 1. So those are my... Those are my inflection, I'm sorry, those are my maxes and mins of my original graph. And now let's set up a little sign analysis here. Here's negative 1, here's 0, and here's positive 1. What plug in values between here and see what's happening. Because we know these are maxes and mins of my original function. Right? So let's plug in values to the left. Where would it, if I had like negative 2, if I plugged in negative 2, do, just do it in your head. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 8 times 8 is negative 64. Plus something is still going to be negative. So it's negative to the left of negative 1. Now let's plug in 1 half and see what happens at 1 half. At 1 half, it's going to be. Um, 1 over, if I cube 1 half, I get 1 eighth, so 8 times 1 eighth is 1, minus 8 to the 1 half, that's still going to be negative. Sorry, I'm put, I said that wrong, it should be negative 1 half, I knew something didn't sound right, so let's redo that. This should be negative 1 half, when I plug negative 1 half into here, I get negative... <laughs> I get negative 1 right there, and negative 1 half here gives me positive 4. So this is going to be positive inside there. Between negative 1 and 0, the double derivative is positive. If I plug in 1 half, I just did that a second ago, it's negative. And if I plug in 2, you can see quickly that's going to be positive. So where is the graph? Where is this function? decreasing, it's decreasing from, let me go ahead and clean this up here, it's decreasing, I won't clean it up, I'll just do it like this, it's decreasing from negative infinity to 1, I'm sorry, to negative 1, and, so you can put union, from 0 to 1, and where is it increasing? It's increasing from 1, see, negative 1 to 0, union from positive 1 to positive infinity. That's when it's increasing. So remember they asked us for increasing and decreasing, we just did that. Now they're asking us for concave up and concave down. Alright, so to find out where it's concave up and concave down, we're going to take the derivative, which was that function, and we're going to take the derivative again. In other words, we're finding the double derivative, which is just going to equal 8 times 3, which is 24x squared minus 8. And again, we can um, factor to, to simplify this a little bit. That's 3x squared minus 1. So you can see that the solutions are going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Those are my zeros for my double derivative, which tell me the inflection points on my original graph. Sorry for the bad spelling. It tells me the inflection points of my original graph. Oh, but I forgot to answer the other question. This also tells me the max and min points or the local extrema of my original graph. You can see since it's decreasing and then increasing, that means it's a max point at negative 1. Since it's going from positive to negative, it means it's a min point. Sorry, I made a mistake. I, I'm, I got it backwards. 
since it's going from negative to positive, it would be an increasing because it's going down and then it's going up. So that's a min point right there. Thanks for pointing that out. This is a max point right here, and this is a min point right there. So to find those exact values, I'll leave the work to you. You would just plug in negative 1 and plug it in here and tell me to find out what your y is. That's That would be called your... That would be a min point, and so would this one. When you plug in 1, those would be two minimums. And your maximum would be when you plug in 0, which you can see that's just 0, comma 1. So your max would be 0, comma 1. But you could... I'll leave the work for you to find those min points. All right, back to the inflection points. Well, the inflection point is going to be when I plug in negative 1 half... Or, sorry, negative square root of one-third and positive square root of one-third into the original function right here. When I plug those in is what I'm going to, is, is, and again I'll leave the work to you, but the inflection points are going to be positive square root of one-third, comma, whatever the function value of that is, and negative. Actually it's going to be the same thing because you can see it's an even function. See how they're to the even powers? So you know that those values are going to be the same. Whatever that value is will also be that value. It's an even function. Actually, yeah, it is an even function. Okay, so, uh, but they're asking us if it's where it's concave up and concave down, so let's do that sine analysis again. Here's negative root one-third, negative square root of one-third, and here's positive square root of one-third. So, those are where the double derivative is zero. If the double derivative is positive, it's concave up, and if the double derivative is negative, it's concave down. <coughs> So we're going to find that out by plugging in values. Well, I know zero is between there, so let's check out zero right here. All right, if I plug in zero, I get, I'm sorry, into my double derivative, not my derivative, into my double derivative, I get a negative value. So it's concave down from negative square root of one-third to positive square root of one-third. And then let's pick a value over here. How about 1? One? 1's easy to plug in. If I plug in 1 here, what do I get? Positive or negative? It's positive. And if I plug in negative 1 here, what do I get? Also positive. So what's, what does that mean? It means it's concave up from negative infinity to negative square root of 1 third union. I'm going to run out of space here. Um, let me make some space right there. Union, positive square root of one-third, comma, positive infinity. Sorry for the chicken scratch, but hopefully you're able to follow all that. That's how you do that problem in eight minutes.